Welcome back to my series of videos where I work through the Sonic Pi tutorial. In this episode, is this an episode? We can call it an episode, yeah. In this episode, section 2.4, Duration with Envelopes. Duration with Envelopes. In an earlier section, we looked at how we can use the sleep command to control when to trigger our sounds. However, we haven't yet been able to control the duration of our sounds. In order to give us a simple yet power means of controlling the duration of our sounds, Sonic Pi provides the notion of an ADSR amplitude envelope. We'll cover what ADSR means later in this section. An amplitude envelope offers two useful aspects of control. Control over the duration of the sound, and control over the amplitude of a sound. Starting with duration. The duration is the length the sound lasts for. A longer duration means that you'll hear the sound for longer. Sonic Pi's sounds all have a controllable amplitude envelope, and the total duration of that envelope is the duration of the sound. Therefore, by controlling the envelope, you control the duration. Amplitude. The ADSR envelope not only cause envelope, excuse me. The ADSR envelope not only controls duration, it also gives you fine control over the amplitude of the sound. All audible sounds start and end silent and contain some non-silent part in between. Envelopes allow you to slide and hold the amplitude of non-silent parts of the sound. It's like giving someone instructions on how to turn up and down the volume of a guitar amplifier. For example, you might ask someone to start at silence, slowly move up to full volume, hold it for a bit, then quickly fall back to silence. Sonic Pi allows you to program exactly this behavior with envelopes. Just to recap, as we have seen before, an amplitude of 0 is silence and an amplitude of 1 is normal volume. Now let's look at each of the parts of the envelopes in turn. Release phase. The only part of the envelope that's used by default is the release time. This is the time it takes for the synth's sound to fade out. All synths have a release time of 1, which means that by default they have a duration of 1 beat, which at the default BPM of 60 is 1 second. Play 70. Let's hear that example. The note will be audible for 1 second. Go ahead and time it. This is shorthand for the longer, more explicit version. Let's listen to the, the, the default way, and let's listen to the defined release. You should agree that those sounded just the same. In fact, the tutorial says, notice how this sounds exactly the same. The sound lasts for one second. However, it's now very easy to change the duration by modifying the value of the release opt, as in play 60, release 2. We can make the synth sound for a very short amount of time by using a very small release time. Here we have 0 0.2. Oh yeah, nice and short. The duration of the release of the sound is the, called the release phase, and by default is a linear transition, i.e. a straight line. Oh, so we can be nonlinear. It, apparent, it seems to be suggesting. That's exciting. The following diagram illustrates this transition. Release, go, amplitude goes up, amplitude goes down. The vertical line at the left of the diagram shows that the sound starts at zero amplitude but goes up to full amplitude immediately. This is the attack phase which we'll cover next. If you're, if you're um, Astute viewers may notice that we had ADSR above, and we, we've already done delay, so that must be the D, then attack is the A. Go Anyway, moving on. Once at full amplitude, it then moves in a straight line down to zero, taking the amount of time specified by release. Longer release times produce longer synth fadeouts. You can therefore change the duration of your sound by changing the release time. 
have a play adding release times to your music. What I want to do is play, we're going to play the chord starting at 60 with amplitude, uh, no, duration. Duration. We'll start with the quiet, we'll start with short on the bottom. So if you see what I'm doing here, I'm I've got a chord and I'm the lower sound the lower pitch notes have a shorter duration. Let's see how that sounds. That's kind of neat. All right, let's move on with the tutorial. Attack phase. By default, the attack phase is 0 for all synths, which means they move from 0 amplitude to 1 immediately. This gives the synth an initial percussive sound. However, you may wish to fade your sound in. This can be achieved with the attack opt. Try fading in some sounds. All right. So we're playing 60 with an attack of 2. And remember the uh, decay. Is it decay phase? Release phase, sorry. Oh, I, I misspoke before I said decay, but I should have said R for release. OK. The attack phase. Play 60, attack 2, and then release is going to take 1. Uh, sleep 3. Play 65, attack 0 0.5. Let's try it. That's nice. You may use multiple ops at the same time. For example, a short attack and a long release. For that, try this. We have play 60, attack 0 0.7, release 4. Oh, I can imagine some neat things to be done with this. This short attack and long release envelope is illustrated by the following diagram. Notice the attack goes up pretty quickly and then the release goes down more slowly. Very nice. Of course you may want to switch things around. Try a long attack and a short release. What if we do both at the same time? I'm actually not sure what that would sound like. Hmm. Didn't sound as interesting as I hoped it might. And here we can see the sh um, oh, try them around, change them around. Here we have it, play 60, attack 4, release 0 0.7 with a slow attack and a faster release. Finally, you can ha also have both short attack and release times for shorter sounds. We'll try that one. Yep, nice and short. Short and sweet. Sustain phase. In addition to specifying attack and release times, you may also specify a sustain time to control the sustain phase. This is the time for which the sound is maintained at full amplitude between the attack and release phases. So we have play 60, attack 0 0.3, sustain 1, release 1. Let's try that. And here's a diagram of that quick attack, a, a, a medium long portion of sustain, and a medium long time for release. The sustain time is useful for important sounds you wish to give full presence in the mix before entering an optional release phase. Of course, it's totally valid to set both the attack and release ops to zero, and just use the sustain to, ha the sustain to have absolutely no fade in or fade out to the sound. However, be warned. A release of zero can produce clicks in the audio, and it's often better to use a very small value, such as 0 0.2. Let's try a few things here. Let's try play 60 
attack zero. We don't actually have to specify that; it's default. But um, sustain one release zero. Let's just try it. Interesting. Why doesn't it why doesn't it make it a, a click at the when the attack is zero? That's one thing I don't understand. I'll have to, I'll have to think about that. Decay phase. For an extra level of control, you can also specify a decay time. This is a phase of the envelope that fits between the attack and sustain phases and specifies a time where the amplitude will drop from the attack level to the decay level, which unless you spec which unless you explicitly set it will be set to the sustain level. Uh, I need to back up and read that again. This is a phase of the envelope, the decay time, is a phase of the envelope that sits between the attack and sustain phases and specifies a time where the amplitude will drop from the attack level to the decay level, which means unless you explicitly set it, which unless you explicitly set it will be equal to the sustain level. Oh, I get it. By default, the decay opt is zero, and both the attack and sustain levels are one, so you'll need to specify them for the decay time to have any effect. That was kind of a lot of information, but let's look at the example. We have play 60, attack 0 0.1, attack level 1, decay 0 0.2, sustain level 0 0.4, sustain 1, release 0 0.5. And I, this looks like it's a chart that, that summarizes that. So we've got an attack up to the attack level, a decay down to the sustain level, and a release down to zero. Let's see how that sounds. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, you hear that initial little jolt, and then it cools off a bit, and then slowly. Ah, huh, that's neat. So let's 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 parse this about the. From the attack level to the decay level, which unless you express it explicitly would be the sustain level. This smiley face here is really throwing me off. <laughs> um, so the sustain level is where it sustains, and the decay level means where it's going. And I guess what this is saying is you could have a different decay level set to something like zero. Let's just try it. This, it almost that'll almost be like multiple sounds, but okay, level zero. Yeah, that in that one it went all the way up, all the way down, jumped back up, and then slowly down. Anyway, oh, now it's gonna show it more in detail. That's okay. Decay level. One last trick is that although the decay level opt defaults to be the same as the sustain level, you can explicitly set them to different values for full control over the envelope. This allows you to create envelopes such as the following. Oh, it's like that. Okay, interesting. Um, this one's a lot of copy paste. I'll type it out so you can see it, so you can perceive it bit by bit. Play 60. Why is it? Play 60, attack 0 0.1, that's up here, attack level 1, that's up to here again, again that's up to here, decay 0 0.2 with decay level 0 0.3, then sustain 1, with sustain level 0 0.4, that brings us up to here. So sustain level is at the end of the sustain phase, okay. And then release 0 
release 0 0.5. Uh, I spelled, I typed it wrong somewhere. Let's just copy paste. It's a little hard to hear the difference between here and here, but I'll trust that it's there. It's also possible to the set the decay level to be higher than the sustain level. Well, that's just silly. We attack to here, and then we decay upwards to the decay level, come down to the sustain level, and back down to the release zero level. Let's listen to it. I mean, I guess if you really want that careful of control, but it would sound pretty similar to have it just be an attack that takes the same time as the attack plus the decay. I won't, I won't quibble on that point. ADSR envelopes. Now I have to apologize because earlier in this video I said that D is for duration, which I don't know why I said that, but that was not correct. I'm going to summarize now because that's what the tutorial is doing and also because that can set the record straight. So to summarize, Sonic Pi's ADSR envelopes have the following phases. Attack, time from zero amplitude to the attack level. Decay, time to move from amplitude from attack level to decay level. Sustain, amount of time to move from decay level to sustain level. And release, time to move from amplitude from sustain level to zero. It's important to know that the duration of a sound is the summation of the times of each of the phases. Therefore, the following sound will have a du duration of 0 0.5 plus 1 plus 2 plus 0.5 equals 4 beats. Okay. Now go and have a play adding envelopes to your sounds. That was kind of a long video, so I think I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to remember about envelopes so I can play with them later. Thanks for watching.